welcome to uh, My Life in Football. And of course, uh, thank you for watching the shows that we've put out so far. And uh, of course, joining me tonight is, well, probably the one of the biggest living legends of the East League through the years. And of course, Mr. Terry Spillane. So welcome, Terry. That's a, that's, a, that's a nice introduction, Dave. I'm not sure that's fully true, but thanks anyway. Always one of the nicest guys I've ever met in non-league football, so uh, I think he's well, well deserved. So, I mean, Terry, I mean, of course, my life in football, I mean, where, where did football all start for you? I mean, you know, through, through the years, where did you start off? Uh, in, like management, management-wise, I started off um, as, a, as, a, as a player coach, actually, with a man um, at Snaresbrook, Snaresbrook Football Club. Uh, that was in the uh, the Essex Business Hours League. Um, so, yeah, that's where it all started for me. A uh, little private club over in Nutter Lane in Wanstead. Um, had four brilliant years there. I ended my playing career there. Um, well, I say playing career, I kicked the ball about a little bit. I weren't too, <laughs> weren't too great. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's where I started there. Snaresbrook in the Essex Business Hours League. Uh, we, won, uh, we won the league there. Uh, we won the cup three years running, and had a great time there. We had some, uh, had some, brought some good players through. But Leon McKenzie through there as a 15-year-old, uh, Shea Stadart, another non-league striker that went on to play for Wolf and Forest and had a good career. So we uh, we had some we had some good times down at Stansbury. I mean, what was that like though, coming out of you know being a sort of a player, then a player manager, and and, and that, I mean, was that was that was that difficult or did you? Uh, no, transition? to be. No, it weren't, you know, because um, like my football career was was a bit stop start really. Um, you know, as I said, I played I played for Bark and I played for Dagenham. Um, not, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing spectacular. But um, like through me through my early twenties, I concentrated on my on my business interests. You know, I'd, uh, I ended up having three businesses running with my brother, which took up a lot of time. So football was on a, on a bit of a back burner really. I played Sundays with my friends. <coughs> uh, and then I played on the odd Saturday, which is how it came about with Snare. So I played for a good mate of mine, Larry Woods. Uh, got injured, stamped the cruciate ligament when I was 32. Um, and he just said to me, rather than drop out of football, help me out, come and help us out. And that's how it started. I, I loved it from, from the first minute, really. Sort of, uh, you know, the coaching side of it and organising the players and um, getting them to do things that I couldn't do. <laughs> so where, where, from Snaresbrook, I mean, where did where did you move on from there? Was it was it onwards and upwards? <coughs> yeah, from Snaresbrook, um, we went to um, a club called Frankford Senior. I think they're just called Frankford now. Uh, it was in the um, Essex Olympian League. Um, they just missed out on relegation on goal difference or something like that. So it was a bit of a bit of a bit of a jump for us. Really, it was a step up. Um, and they had a, you know, they had a lovely setup over there. I had four or five teams. Um, so yeah, we, we 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 grabbed that chance with both fans, me and Larry. We both went there as joint managers, actually. Um, and again, we we turned it around there in our first year there. <clears throat> um, we won the Essex Premier Cup, uh, come second or third in the league. Uh, won a Cherry Red Trophy, uh, and uh, you know had a, had a good time there. Again, we had some some good players there. We took Leon there with us. Um, he, he had a year there with us and then went on to have a, a good career in non-league football, as you know. Uh, so we had some good players there. We had some good players. There's some good players in that league <clears throat> that could have played uh, higher, but for whatever reason, through work or whatever work commitments, they played in that league. It was quite a strong league then. I don't know what it's like now, but it was a strong league then. Was that was that always difficult for you, though, in, in, that sort of in, in the early days, getting used to players that, you know, we've worked, we've worked schedules and stuff like that, not actually maybe having to be for, for games? To be honest, no, because it's it's all that I knew really. You know, that's that's uh, that's the sort of player I was as well. I could I couldn't commit to training twice a week or playing Saturdays every week. Um, so you know, I understood that it was part and parcel of it. But obviously, you know, the eye the eye you go, then that becomes more important. Obviously, you know. So um, you know, we had three three and a half years at Frankfurt where we done really, you know, well, I think we done really well there. Um, and then we took the, the step up to Stansted, which was um, uh, a, a big chance, to say the least. They'd been bottom of the league two years running. So uh, looking back at it now, um, I mean, it ended up being the right decision because, you know, my, my career in manager, and as a manager just, just rocketed from there. But 
Um, I've got to say, thinking back now, I'm not sure whether I'd uh, whether I'd take that risk now. <laughs> well, so, so did you, did you see it as a? Did you see it? Well, now do you see it as a big risk then that you, you took to go? Oh, it's, it's, again, it's funny how it comes about. It's, you know, you, you know, football. I've learned over the years, and I and I, and I always say it was sometimes just well, most of the time, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and I was talking, you know, a good mate of mine, Rod Stringer. Uh, he was a, um, I think he was a barking side at the time, or barking. And I was out having a drink with him one night, and he just said, "Look, he said, like the Stansted jobs come up. I know the chairman there. How would you, how would you fancy it?" So, in a, you know, after five or six lagers, I sort of like <laughs> said, "Yeah, I yeah, will have some of that." Um, not, not having a clue like what you know what, what, what they was or where they'd been. Um, but yeah, I went and met the chairman, and um, from the minute I walked in there, I loved it. I had four years there, um, and and I'd, but, but for reasons that I'll come to. I'd, I'd have never left that club, you know. It's, it was a, it was a, it was a good time. So I had four brilliant years there. So what was highlights of, of being at Stansted then? What made it such a, you know, a um, happy place? Well, the first, the first couple, as I say, they'd, they'd, cut, they'd come bottom um, two years running. Uh, the first game that I went to watch, they got beat fourteen <laughs> one. Um, yeah, fourteen um, one. So I knew. Is that after I'm, you'd agree to actually be, go, go there? Yeah. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, after after we sort of like said, yeah, yeah, we do it. Um, but I knew I knew what I was walking into. Um, I knew that I'd, had, you know, I knew I knew that I had a core of players that had, um, that had come with me, all young kids like my my, my middle son Tom. They was playing all playing for Broxbourne under 18s. Um, they was ready to take the step up. Um, so I took uh, five six of those with me. Uh, we come 14th in the first season, got to the semi final of the cup. Um, outplayed most things, but just um, being being young and inexperienced, got out battled and, and out fault sort of stuff. Uh, the second year was pretty much the same. Um, <coughs> so um, going into after the second season, going into the third season, they'd grown up by then. You know, they was twenty years old by then. They had, had two years experience in the Essex Senior League. Um, so I was pretty confident that we was going to come in the top four or five, um, but uh, we'd done a little bit better in it. <laughs> so where, for those who don't know, where, where, did you, where, did you, where did you finish? We won it. We, yeah. we, <laughs> we won it. Yeah, we uh, the next the next two seasons was like a whirlwind, really. You know, the, the, the players that we had, um, you know, well documented. We had Dwight Galdier, um John Bricknell, uh, Scott Hannibal, uh, Danny Demetrio. Danny Cornwall, you know, players that were, were were playing below the standard that they should be, really. So what was uh, what was what was, what was the course? I mean, everybody's going to ask want me to ask a question. What was Dwight like to to, to manage? Well, he, he was training with us for about a year before he played. He didn't want to play. He was he was Tom's mate. Tommy, Tom's mate. Um, he, he hadn't he hadn't played for about two two three years. He, he had no interest in playing whatsoever. Completely fell out of love with the game. Uh, and he was coming training with us for for months, months on end. Um, and then one Saturday, we was, you know, we had we were short. Um, I managed to talk him into playing, stuck him out on the right. We weren't too uh, too happy. We still tells me about him there, but yeah, he just he just fell back in love with the game. I guess you know we had we had they was what they was all his mates. They was all his school mates. Um, I, had a, I had a fantastic coach there with me, Dave Bricknell, who, who you've no doubt know. Um, and it was just a night. It was just a good, good atmosphere to play. There's no money there. Uh, the ground was in a right state. You know, the pitch was all fault to say the least. But it was our pitch and it was our ground. So um, we we sort of um, in built that into the boys sort of thing. You know, and it and it, and it paid off for us. The, the the third season we was there. Well, over, over two seasons we had. Um, I think we lost like I think we lost six games in two years. You know, like seventy games. It was just, it was frightening, really, how good they were. You know, looking back now, you just, you, I just took it for granted. Um, but, but it was frightening how good they were, that team. Was that one of the best sides you've managed so far? With, without question. Mm. Without question, yeah. The team that I had in there <coughs> for, the, for the third and fourth season. Well, I mean, from Stancy, we went to Redbridge and got the second round property FA for most of them players. You know, and we come sixth in the league that year. Had a good run in the trophy, good run in the Essex Cup. So that's how good that team was. Did you want, they, they, they did, that team? Did Dwight go with you then to Redbridge? 
I treat that. I wish you had it done because I think we'd have won the FA Cup that year. <laughs> um, no, he he he'd, he'd had a few clubs sniffing around in Peterborough. Funny enough, come to watch him five six times. Uh, they decided for whatever reason he was too small or not for them, and they ended up paying I don't know five million for him about eighteen months later off of Dagenham. So uh, they, they they missed the boat there. Uh, during that, at the end of that season, it was quite obvious Dwight had scored pretty much when he wanted to, really. He was that good that much, you know, he was that good. Um, uh, uh, Dave Bricknell um, gave John Steele a call and just said, look, we've got this kid here. Uh, he's worth having a look at. Um, I don't think John was too, too hot on him at first, again, because of his size. He's not the biggest Dwight, but he's, he's he was a brave little son. So you know, and he's got a leap on him. You know, he, he's he could he could out jump six foot centre halves. Um, and I think um, Terry Harris, I think was the main was the the, the, the person at Dagenham really that, that said, you know, all right, we'll have a we we'll get hold of him, we'll have a look at him. First thing they done was stuck him out on loan at Bishop Stalford, who funny enough the manager there was Rod Stringer, <coughs> and I think Dwight got 30, 40 goals in his first season there. So. Yeah, he didn't look back. I wish I wish we had a catch him at referees, but <laughs> it was time for him to move on, no doubt. Well, I think one of the things I've, I I was told, whether true or not true, that um, yeah, I think before the 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 people that are there now, but uh, Dwight actually went down to Harlow at one stage, and they turned around and said I didn't think he was good enough. I mean, it was that is, if that is true, I think that's a mistake. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean. Uh, uh, I, I know what you're talking about. He didn't actually go to Arlo. Right. Um, but uh, Arlo, um, whoever their coaches was, or scouts or whatever, they used to come regular to our games. Uh, as did Bishop Stalford, I think. Yeah. But they, they just never picked up on any of the players, as I say. That, but Dwight was one of those, you know, he's, he's, if you come and watched him, he never, he, never really, he never really stood out as such that you walked over and said, oh, that's Dwight Gow. Yeah. Um, but then at the end of the game, when we won 4-0, when you see Dwight Gale free, <laughs> then they go, oh, that's him, sort of thing, you know. So, um, he, as I say, he wasn't the biggest Dwight. He was, he was, you know, about seven and a half stone ringing wet. Uh, he's a lot. He's worked on that now. If you see him now, he's built like a brick house. Um, so, I don't think anyone missed the boat, so to speak. That's, that's a bit unkind, really. But they certainly come to watch uh, our team quite a few times, yeah. Do you see him... Do you still see him, or do you get chance? I spoke to him yesterday. I spoke to him yesterday. Yeah, yeah he's, he, he's catch his feet on it. He's not. Uh, he's got two kids now. He's you know um, got a nice, nice, nice girl that he lives with. Uh, he's at West Brom at the moment, as you know. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah, I spoke to him about uh, about that yesterday. Yeah, so he, I'll probably talk to him once a month. We're always on the WhatsApp or whatever. Um, yeah, keeps in touch. So he's not happy about the loan deal you want to for him, enough. Uh, he said Stanway was a bit too far for him, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you was there at Stansted, everything going hunky dory So, how did the how did the move to Redbridge come about? <coughs> Basically, we um, um, we just couldn't get promoted. Um, we, we tried Grand Sharon with Bishop Stalford. Uh, every avenue we tried to take, um, there was a blockade put in place for whatever reason. Uh, I think the FA was a lot, lot a lot more... Um, not as diplomatic now or not as easy to get on with, if you know what I mean. Um, and the, 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 the chairman from Redbridge um, had called me, just said that he'd uh, heard good things about me and would I go and chat with him. Uh, and like I said, I had no intention of leaving Stansted, but um, quite a few of the players was um, not unsettled, but, you know, they were sort of like Stansted, like, you know, we've won it now. You know, we're, 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 we're winning every week. It's sort of like a bit, you know, mm. bit, bit boring, really. Um, and that's no disrespect to the other teams, yeah. in it, because, they, you know, there's some very, very good teams in there. It's just that uh, we had a very, very good set of players. Um, and I just thought to myself, if I don't I don't take the chance now, maybe it'll never come again, I don't know. Um, I went and met the chairman. Um Pretty, pretty much, really the same same situation as as Stansted, Really, I think they stayed up on by a point or something like that they, from the, the season before. Um, the ground was not the greatest. The pitch weren't the greatest. I was going to say, you haven't don't improved the you haven't improved your pitch too much, have you? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Probably too saying about me, Dave. I suppose. <laughs> I <don't know. coughs> um, but yeah, we. I, I went and met the chairman. 
got on really well with him. He was a, he was a, 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 a young fella. Uh, he had big plans for the club, sold them to me. Um, and, you know, again, we, I, I went there and we had a, had a brilliant year. Again, I'd have never have left there but for unforeseen circumstance. Mm. So, I mean, with that, com- that coming up, I mean, you say unforeseen circumstances, you know, was that more down to the, the FA not getting you, the, the team promoted? Um, at Redbridge? No, at the it, uh, Stanstead. Yeah, the club, the club couldn't, you yeah. know, it couldn't, it, it, it couldn't, um, you know, could you, you couldn't get promoted. Um, and we was like the best team in it by, by, by a mile. And it's just, um, you know, the, the, the first year we won it, uh, I think Whitton comes to second or something like that. Um, uh, and I think they was hoping to get promoted that year, which they should have done. They should have done in place of us. Um, but I think they brought a new system out with points per games ratio. So they missed out on promotion with them. So no one went up from the S16 league, which is a bit of a farce really, yeah. isn't it? You know, so... Um, yeah, it was it was just trying to move on really. I, I, as I say, if the club was um, was able to move up through, I, I'd have stayed there. No, no question about that. Um, but you know, these things happen, and, and I moved on to Redbridge. So going into Redbridge, then I mean, first season at Redbridge, how, how did we get on then? <laughs> uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, even when I think about it now, you know, I, I look back at that and I. You know, we had such a tight knit group of players. I bought quite a few of the boys from Stansted. Um, not all of them, but quite quite a few, a majority of them. Um, I added some players, uh, Glenn Golby, uh, Dan Trenkel. I added experienced players, um, Adam Rathis, goalkeeper. Um, and we just, I mean, the first first couple of games uh, in the league was an eye opener for us. And I think we played um, Leiston. Or lower stuff, one of those things up there, and they, you know they, they, I think they beat us two one, bit of an eye opener for us. Um, <coughs> but we we done okay, um, and then we we played about three weeks later. We played a team called Cockfosters in the FA Cup preliminary round, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I'm not just saying it, but that was the toughest game we had in the FA Cup that year. <laughs> how, how we won that game, I, to this day I don't know. They absolutely battered us. And we won 2-1 with more or less the last kick of the game, which started an FA Cup run, as I say, that was incredible, you know. And uh, again, you know, you look back at days like that and you just think, um, you know, was it luck or was it, you know, was it written sort of thing, you know. And uh, I'm not really a believer in all that stuff, but you know, when things like that happen, you do start wondering, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so they was by far the better team than us that day. And I remember, <coughs> funny enough, after I'm always, uh, remind Danny of it, the chairman at Redbridge. Uh, I always, <coughs> I always remember him saying to me that, um, well, you know, we're going to struggle this year with that team. We're going to struggle, and I, I said, oh, but keep a bit of faith, Dan. You know, we're we're doing all right, and uh, yeah, yeah, we've done more than all right, didn't we? <laughs> done more. So from Cockfoss, I mean, take us through the journey. So from Cockfosters, what, what was the what was the next round? <coughs> um, well, you caught me there. Um, from Cockfosters. Um, but it was the only team we played below us, uh, level-wise. <coughs> Other than that, every team we played was a level above. I think we played um, Berry, uh, who was in the Ryman Prem at the time. We played them at home. Um, beat them 2-0, physical. I remember that being a really physical game on our pitch. Um, but, we, you know, we, we, was, we was OK. Well, we had players like Ryan Murray in the team. Um, Billy Sendall, Glenn Galby. Uh, Vinnie Durant, Tom, you know, people that could put their foot in as well as play. Um, so, yeah, we, 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 we beat Berry in the next round. Um, then we played... Uh, that was at home. And then we played um, Wingate and Finchley. Uh, again, it was a division above us. Over at their place, that was. Um, I think we beat them 2-0 as well. On a perfect pitch, you know what the pitch is like over there. Oh, yeah. Um, um, you know, we we we've done really well again that day. Clean sheet. <coughs> I remember um, Adam Rathis in that game was more or less a a passenger. You know, we we was well on top in that game. I felt. Um, and in between that, we was winning that. We you know we was picking up points in 
in the league and, and doing well in other cups, the Trophy, the Essex Senior Cup and the League Cup. Um, but, you know, you're just getting that, you're getting that, um, you're getting a situation where you just, the, the, the quicker the games come, the more you like it when you're winning. You know, when you're losing, you want to, you want, you want to stop the train every now and then and, and, and have, have a rejig. But, yeah, uh, then Wingate and Finchley. Um, then we played Dunstable, played Dunstable at home. Uh, that was a tough game. You know, they, again, they was uh, a, a league above. I oh, had been beaten that year. Um, I think I think they went one new up early on, um, and I think we ended up winning that three one maybe. I can't can't recall, um, but we ended up winning that as well. Uh, then we drew uh, Ebbs Fleet at home. It was a national conference side and doing really well. Liam Dace was the manager. Um, uh, <laughs> When they turned up, they, they thought that our pitch was the training pitch, so they weren't <laughs> looking forward to it. Uh, um, and the beef there, you know, I'm not going to say we battered them because we didn't, but we was well on top in that game and deservedly won 2 0. Deservedly won 2 0. And I think that was that was one of the, the best days I've had all that, that day. Because we had a big crowd over at Redbridge, which we were, you know, weren't, weren't renowned for. And we really played well that day. I, mean, I remember I didn't really have a, I didn't really have to do a team talk that day. You know, you sometimes you walk in a changing room and, uh, and you look around and you see your big players like Golby and whatever. Um, and they, I, I just, I sound silly now, but I knew we'd win that day. I just knew we'd win that day when no one else, no one else gave us an earthly chance really. So yeah, we we won that. <coughs> then got drawn at home um, to Oxford City. Again, level above. Um, and on on the day, um, I think they say they should have beat us. <clears throat> we uh, we rode our luck that day quite a bit. They had two or three really good chances, and yet right at the end of the game, we had a really good goal uh, disallowed for a foul which um, just weren't. So mm. I reminded their manager they had his bit of luck as well that day. Uh, we had to go to. Oxford on a Tuesday night, <coughs> which ain't the best uh, journey. Not the best yeah. uh, journey to have on a Tuesday night. Um, we had a little stop on the way that the chairman said, "Look, we'll have a stop, something to eat." And um, this is no word of a lie. Glenn Golby had a full mixed grill. <laughs> full mixed grill. We couldn't believe it. I mean, like me and Jody, um, you know, everyone was having chicken and spaghetti or whatever, all the beans on toast, all they were supposed to eat. And uh, yeah, he ordered a mixed grill. It was about that high off his plate. <clears throat> but, um, you know, he said he was going to have a Diet Coke, so it was all right. He wasn't going to have a beer, so that, that made it all right for him, I suppose. Um, yeah, we went to Oxford City, uh, went 1 0 down after about 15 minutes, and you sit there thinking, ah, oh, here we go. You know, they, they was well on top of us. And then I don't know, don't know where, I don't know, what, don't know what happened, but the game just changed. Um, and, and, and we ended up winning that 2 um, 1. And deservedly so as well. You know, we, we was well on top for the rest of that game. On about 75 minutes, Dave, a funny story. Well, not funny, but a good story. Um, we was we was in charge of the game. And this fog just come down from nowhere. <laughs> like, literally, like, it was clear. It was a really clear night. And this fog just came. And obviously, they're all saying, call the game off, Red. You know, you can't see the ball, this, that, and the other. And uh, as quick as it came, it went. So that was a bit of a strange... Uh, Strange experience because when that come down, I, I did think, yeah. oh, we're, we're done here. They're going to just call it off." So yeah, I think that um, again, we had luck on our side that night in that respect. <clears throat> um, yeah, won that one, and then the next, uh, the next round, we got Crawley away, the Man City of League Two, we called them. <laughs> Only those top of the league. Um, yeah, that we, we we was we was quite happy with that. You know, the, the only, the only, I think the only thing that, um, I think if we'd have played them at home, I'm not saying we'd have beat them because they was quality. They was on the day, they was quality. But I think if we'd have played them at home, we'd have had much more better chances. If you know what I mean? Yeah. They weren't a beat. It was a good day out for us. Um, got well beat five nil, something like that. Five nil, I think it was. Had a player sent off, Vinny Durant. Um, so it weren't a weren't a perfect ending, but it was a, it was a perfect season sort of thing, if you know what I mean. So how did you during all that run? I mean, how did you try and keep the players' heads in the game for the league? I mean, was that a difficult thing to do? We, we was just playing so many games, Dave. Yeah, 
we really didn't have yeah we literally didn't have time to think about it which was brilliant and, you know we didn't have, have a tuesday off or a thursday off or a saturday you know we was we was games tuesdays training thursdays games saturdays games tuesdays mm. and it and it, it just we didn't have time to really think about it you know um we had you know we used, we used our uh, our contacts well um just even for the crawley game um stimo mark stimson was uh, managing up at i think it was kidderminster something like that um he gave us a, a dvd on him um still at dagnum i think they'd played him a couple of weeks before they give us some information on him. um so we you know we was we was well organized in that respect um i had a brilliant coach with me as well that season as everyone knows jody um and he was brilliant at that stuff you know he, he, he'd analyze another team and he'd pick their weak points out and tell us where we're gonna hurt them. Uh, so um, yeah, me and him, me and him, had a, we had a we had a good good understanding with it. We was like chalk and cheese, we still are. But it just worked for us that year. I was just yeah. going to ask you that question. What was it like to work with somebody like Jody? I mean, he's gone on, you know, he's had his ups and downs probably in this season, and, and now he's doing really well himself up at Dagenham. I mean, you know, what what's it what's he like? I mean, you know, we we see what he's like, yeah. at football, but what, what type of coach is he? It's, you know, like us all, Dave, you know, you, 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 you get people that like me, you get people that hate me, and Joe does the same. We're all, we're, all, we're all like that in football. I like him because he, we just work well together. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know why. We're, we're from completely different backgrounds. Um, got not, not different philosophies on how to play football, but we've got different ideas on how to play football. Um, he's a very educated man, which I'm not. He's uh, he, he's he's a really good coach, and I'm 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 really happy and pleased for him that he's at a club like Dagenham because that's what his knowledge and coaching ability needs to be at. You know, he's 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 a good coach. That's all I'm saying about him. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, from there then, for that first sort of season, how, how did it go on from from there? Would you, would well, you expect the big, end of big season? End of that season, we 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 just missed out on the playoffs. We just ran out of time. Really, we was playing uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday for picking up injuries and and whatnot of the like. Uh, so we just missed out on the playoffs because it was a top five. Then the top one went off, went up, <coughs> and the playoffs was the next four. So we just missed out, which was you know unfortunate. Um, the chairman decided to um, cut his losses and, and 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 walk away from football, which was his. His prerogative, obviously, you know, um, and it, it left it left uh, it left the club in no man's land really because there was no one to take it over and and carry on from there. Mm. Um, the budget I had there was uh, I think it was four hundred. It went up to about five hundred. Um, that was getting cut, mm. um, and I just said to the, you know the, the, the couple of guys who was at Repris, how, how can I ask these fellas to go again for less money? Mm. after earning all that money sort of thing for the club, you know? Yeah. So, one of them things, um, you know, one of them things in football, disappointed. Um, as I say, you know, I had no, no intention of leaving, but as one door shuts, another one opens and more than tip trees door opened up for me. Mm. So, how, how long was you at uh, Redbridge Florida? Just the season or a couple of seasons? One season. One, one season. season. Right, okay. Yeah. One season, yeah. He, um, I think I think he just you know he he he, he was a businessman. Um, uh, I think he'd started to cut the business up around about Christmas time. He couldn't spend as much time as he wanted to at the club, um, and just walk away. You know that's that's his progress, as I say. I wish he'd have stayed and give me three grand a week to pay the players, but weren't the big so. Yeah. As I say, one door shut and another one opened. So what was it like then moving from somewhere like? Redbridge, and then going into to, to Morden. To well, I'd, I'd actually, I'd actually, uh, I'd actually spoken to Avely. Right. Uh, I went and met Craig um, and Graham, um, and I, I was seriously considering that. But when I uh, when I went to uh, Morden, the setup there was just saying that I'd I'd never experienced. You know, it was it was a proper football ground. Pitch was perfect. Um, the ground that the change rooms was nice. That's nothing against Avery yeah. Redbridge yeah. I yeah. understand, but you know, I mean Avery now he's mm. he's best in the league. So uh, but at the time that's what swung it for me really. I went and met the chairman there. Uh, the budget was good. Um I, I spent two and a half brilliant years there. I, you know, I really enjoyed it there. 
So I suppose one of the biggest things that happened at Morden, and of course everybody knows what knows the, the big story. If you had the, the massive highs at Redbridge, was yeah. as Keith tells tells you every time he sees you. you know, I mean, literally, was that the biggest low? And, and how was how did you sort of keep your how, how was it behind the scenes when when all that was sort of going on? Dev- mm. Devastating because you know, uh, obviously. Grace won the league, went on an unbelievable run. Um, we'd actually been on a bet, we'd, we'd been on a brilliant run ourselves, we hadn't lost till Boxing Day. And we set, so I think we set a league record, and then they went on a run and beat it the same season. Mm. Um, that was just, you know, that, that was hard to take. Uh, losing, you know, not winning it uh, outright, but losing the playoffs. We played Avery in the semi finals, um, we, we beat those. And then we had Thames Mead, who'd come from nowhere, really. You know, they'd, they'd been on a really good run. Um, and regardless of what Keith says, obviously they beat us <laughs> at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you know, they, they beat us on the day and got promoted. But we was the better side. No question about that. Uh, I think for the first 30 minutes, we could have could have and should have been four or five up. Uh, we didn't take them. And, uh, and they got ourselves back in the game. But the, the team that I had that year at Morgan were... Brilliant, like Ollie Burgess, Lee Boylan, Jamie Guy, uh, Ben Smith. You know, the list goes on and on. You know, Glenn Golby. They're such a good side. Chris Bryan, James Robin, James Robinson. Um, so yeah, dev- devastating. After I mean, that game, complete devastation. Yeah. So I mean, how you know you saw that happening in, in front of you? It must be so difficult for a manager of your experience when you see. You know, all of a sudden, you just feel like anything you do is just not not working as such, and you see greats come flying up. And it, it... do you know what? As, as I it's, it's, I had the obviously a feeling to the, the feeling I had that season with Redbridge or Stancy when I just knew we was going to win that day. But that day, we, we I mean, we lost on penalties um, during the game. Even I think even in the last minute, they had one cleared off the line or something like that. You know, but when it went to penalties, I just I just knew that we were. I knew that we, <laughs> I knew we weren't going to win it. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know where. I don't know why. But I just thought, you know, as as much as our luck's been in, in certain games this year, it's not here today. It weren't meant to be, uh, and that was a real shame because um, I think that. Uh, I think you know personally, I think Morden should should be in a in, in a in a Premier Division, um, just set up and, uh, and 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 whatever you know their background. Um, but it weren't to be. Uh, and the next season was was a real was a real tough one, you know, because um, some players moved on. We got new players in, um, and it was always going to be a, an uphill battle, really, you know. But I, I think we come seven, four, eight, something like that. But it was, um, yeah, it was that was that was tough going. That that day was tough. So your, I mean, your with your feelings and and and, and the coaching staff. It, I mean, it must have been. I know you just said it was devastating, but I mean, literally to see. You know, almost every you know, the game and Grays winning, Grays winning, Grays winning. I mean, how was how was the feeling going into that into the playoffs when you knew you know realistically that you're a big low because of you know Gray sort of pipping you to the title. I mean, and, and then sort of it, it was it was tough, but it, it weren't as tough as maybe what what pe- people outside would have thought because you know we had very very good experienced players that had been there, done it, and bought the t-shirt. People, people like Lee Boylan. Uh, Ollie Burkhead, you know them sort of players. They was they were brilliant in the change room for the younger players. I mean, we had a, a had a young Jack Cooley playing. There. I think he was eighteen or nineteen. Uh, a young goalkeeper Joe Wright, uh, Lewis Dark. You know, we, we had some young players, but those players sort of like amalgamated uh, amalgamated the team for that day because uh, it really was all or nothing on that last game. Mm. For us to play all that season and then lose out on penalties was. It, was, it really was, um, but there, it wasn't. It weren't. A, it weren't a fact that we weren't up for the game or weren't in the game. We was well on top during the game. Um, but as fate goes, it went to penalties, and and the best team didn't win on the day, in my opinion. So, so how do, how do you pick yourself up, let alone the players? You know, at the end of that season, and you know, how do you sort of? It was tough. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was tough. But you know, I've, I've got good people around me. Um, it took took a few weeks to be fair, you know. You, you keep going over things in your head. If I've done this, did I, if I put that player on, but honestly, I'm, you know, I know at the end of the day, whatever I've done that day or the team, 
we weren't winning that day. Mm. We just weren't, whatever we'd have done, it weren't, it just weren't meant to be, you know, for whatever reason. So jumping on to the next season, I mean, uh, how did it, how did it go from, you know, from all in, in, in the following year? Um, not, it was a bit, bit of a roller coaster. I mean, it was tough, you know, because everyone was expecting us to be out there again. Um, everyone was aware of, uh, you know, of the way we played and, and, and the players that we had, so to speak. Um, so it was tough, yeah. As I say, I think we come seventh or eighth, which is, you know, you, you take that most clubs every year. Um, but it weren't good enough for Morden. You know, after that first season, it weren't good enough the people at the club, deservedly, so thought that they should be getting put in the Ryman Premier and um, until this day they're still not in there sort of thing, you know, which is a real shame because I think they should be, but for whatever reason they're not. Well, I'll, I'll say, I've, I've said it on, the, on both shows before now, you know, literally over the last couple of weeks I've seen Bowers and Pitsy this year, I've seen Morden this year and for me, Morden is literally probably the best side I've seen for a long, long time. I thought they were absolutely fantastic when they came down to Averley and... Uh, yeah, I'm quite surprised that you know when they took on each other a few weeks ago that, that Bowers came out on top. Oh, don't get me wrong, Rob's, Rob Small was probably in the same sort of scenario as you were. I would have thought that sort of, maybe not to the same extent. You More not, yeah. You know, we, we know with what happened with them and to pick him up and to do what he's doing with him, he's a yeah, he's yeah, amazing, yeah, brilliant job, yeah, amazing job, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you look at Morden now with their resources, not so much the money, but the the, the efficient they've got with you know certain league club. They, you know, they're, they're always going to be up there, aren't they? You know, so, but they've got that added pressure on them, haven't they? I think everyone wants to beat Morgan because yeah. of that. <coughs> yeah. I think, I think, uh, all due respect to Rob, but I think Bowers have gone under the radar a little bit in the last couple of seasons, you know, so, uh, and he's took full advantage of that. And, well, you know, fair play to him, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so it's from there then, from Morden. I mean, how, how did it finish at Morden and, and, where, to, and where to next? Um, had about, I don't know, 15 years in, had a chat with the chairman. Um, it obviously weren't going going well. Um, and we, we we parted company, you know. So, a um, couple of months later, I uh, got a phone call from um, Thamesmead, a certain Mr. Bowden Brown. <laughs> um, when I met him, um, he, he said to me, uh, obviously, Keith had uh, decided to leave. And there was six guests or something like that. He just said, "Come in, you know, run the run the games out, have a chat in the summer." Um, and it went went quite well, you know. We we met in the summer. He gave me a good budget, um, told me what he wanted to do, these plans that he had that I bought into. Um, and we that we had a season. We had a very good side at Thames, mate. Very good side, good young side. Um, a lot of local players, localish players. Um, had a good first season. Just missed out on the playoffs. Um, in the second season, um, it all went bottoms up, shall we say? <laughs> um, for again, for whatever reason, it just weren't just weren't working out. It weren't things weren't you know things were happening outside outside of the of the of the, the football side of it, um, and it just weren't an happy happy to be. Um, again, we parted company. I was quite happy to get out of there. To be if the truth no. Um, not not because of the people, the people there, you know, the secretary and the players were fantastic, you know, and we had a we had a good camaraderie, had a good team spirit there. Um, so that was a bit of a leaving the you know leaving the players behind and whatever, but uh, it was a right decision. Um, and then pretty much the same thing happened a few months later. Um, Justin went from Avery with a, I don't know twenty games left, whatever it was. I went and met Craig and Graham. I felt as if. I've missed out before. In the back of my mind, when I took them jobs, I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to. I maybe should have gone that way. Although I had a great time at Morgan, mm-hmm. it was still in the back of my mind what could have what could have happened. Uh, you know, if I took the Avery job, being a lot closer to home for me and that. Um, I took over at Avery, just missed out on the playoffs. Um, built a good side there. Got some good players in. Got Mason Bloomfield in from Brentford Reserves, who went on to. He's at Norwich now, went on the site of Dagenham, went to Norwich, uh, site of Norwich. Uh, so we had some good players there. We had a, a striker called Jeremiah Major, mm-hmm. who for six months was unbelievable. Yeah, saw him at the weekend against uh, Chesson yeah. playing for Handball Town, yeah. All right, yeah, obviously I didn't realise he was playing. I'm, I'm glad he's playing again because he's a good mm-hmm. a match, good player. 
he had an unbelievable six months for us, but for whatever reason, outside football, he, he just lost his way a little bit. Uh, yeah, so uh, had a good season there at Avely. Went into the new ground. Um, ten games. Got the uh, got the curly finger call. <laughs> yeah, um, I weren't happy about you know ten games in. That's even at this day, it still still don't see it right with me. But that's non league football. That's, that's the way non league football goes. You know, um, I felt a little bit. I felt a little bit let down by. Uh, you know, I feel a little bit down there with that, um, but that's non-league football. And to be fair, the the, the new fellow they got done all right, hasn't he? So, uh, I, I and as you know, I've said it to you before. I mean, that situation, I was massively surprised, massively shocked when you know I was told that you'd you'd left, and um, yeah. you know, because I said as I said at the beginning of the interview, you know, like one of the nicest guys in football, always had time. You know, before the match, we had a chat. After the match, we had a chat without foul. Whatever happened, win, lose, or draw. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, you know, so for that to happen, I know that my daughter as well was massively shocked when I went in and told her, and she got home from work, and I said, "Oh, look, yeah. you know, Terry's no longer there." And so it was, uh, it was, it was. A I, feel, I mean, you know, listen, it's, it happened. It's, it's one of them things. I just, I just felt like that. I, I think I, I know that I'd have turned it round, uh, but looking back, I don't think, I don't think that's, that, I don't think that was a real reason that um, I was shown the door. I think there was a, a bigger picture, which. Again, you know, that's the club's prerogative and it's their club. They like, so you move on. So you from move Avery, on. I won't push you on what your reasons is not fair, but I mean, literally from from there, I mean, it was a bit of, a bit of a night. Yeah, a bit of a night. A bit of a... No, well, I weren't. From there, I just thought, no, you know, I, I'm not I'm not in it for that. That, that, uh, that was a low blow to me and I just thought, oh, I just won't do it no more. You know, I weren't enjoying it. I just thought, oh, you know, I could give that a miss. And up until about a month ago, I was stuck to that. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the bug never leaves, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know. So from there, I mean, I know you joined forces, you know, like literally myself and Paul for a couple of weeks. And then and then you got, a, 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 you know, a, a phone call, shall we say, or a few phone calls from there. Yeah. Um, just when I, met, when I met the people at Stanway, lovely people, big plans for the club. Um, met the director of football there, who, who I've known uh, during his playing career. Um, and to be fair, it didn't take much to, to get me away. Yeah. You know, um, it's been tough this year because the the remit was, you know, keep us up um, and build for next season. Uh, and that's uh, it's easier said than done, shall we say? Mm. You know, easier said than done. When you're used to winning things uh, and winning winning game after game. It's a tough, tough transitional period. I've got a lot of young players. I've got some really good young players, actually. Um, and it's just their experience. I mean, we played Walthamstow last night. Um, we a packed out of experienced players. And it, and it showed. It showed, you know. So, uh, it's, 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 I'm not saying it's been all better roses, because it hasn't. But um, I'm enjoying it. And the real tester will be next season. So, uh, when do you start building for next season? Have you started that already, that process already? <laughs> Again, this, you know, this is a tough bit. You know, I've got players in mind that I want to get in, but they're at clubs now. Mm. They're good players, so they're at good clubs, so it makes it even even tougher. So it's just a matter of, um, uh, you know, getting more players in now that I can um, and and rebuilding again in, in the summer, so to speak. You know, I have, have practice game, games, games, uh, plenty of phone calls as normal um, and just go from there. Can't wait. Yeah, I mean, literally, I suppose it's is it one of those things. Then for next season, is it going for going for the uh, you know the brass ring, going for the number one position in in the yeah. yeah, that's the plan. Mm. That's the plan. No, I'm not going to hide that fact. That's what I'm there for. Mm. Uh, so obviously, there's got to be um, certain things put in place to do that, which the club have assured me they'll do. So, uh, what's this space? We'll see. So, I mean, away from yourself, then I suppose it's only right just to finish the chat. I suppose. This year, of course, in 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 the in the Bostic League itself. I mean, where do you see where do you see sort of uh, winners and losers there? I mean, where, where you must be keeping an eye on it, I suppose, loosely. I mean, where do you think? Yeah, of course. You know, where do you think people um, are going to be? Do you think it's the top four that are there now going to go on to win it? I think I was used to lose. Mm. Um, I think uh, I think he's he's, he's most. I think he signed Matt Lock, did it a day or the last couple of days? So he's 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 doing his job very well. He's signing players that are 
been there or been about been there for. Um, other than that, I think it's I think it's one of them throw it up in the air and it's the next six or seven clubs. I don't I, I, I can't see anyone other than mm. you know. But they've been in this position so many years. Are they going to get to the final order or fall again? I'd love to see them go up. I, you know, I really would. Yeah. Um, Avely, you know, you, you look at those now and he's he's got to build a really good side there. Very very good, you know, strike force. <clears throat> so they're always going to threat. Um, but there's always one team that comes up on the rails, isn't it? So I'm just, I don't know who that is, but I think yeah. you know, it's always going to be a shock here or there. I don't, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting fight all the way to finish. But just people like, yeah, when, you, it, yeah. when you look at people like Bowers and Pitsy, and you look at people like Haringey Borough, yeah, that have come up from the Essex League only in the last few years, and Haringey with a chance to go into the National South if they carry on the way they're going. You know, Bowers and Pitsy with a chance to go into the into the Prem. Does that yeah. give you uh, a lot of confidence with Stanway Rovers to look at that and go, well, look, you know, if they can do it, why can't we? Yeah, we can, you know, you look at it like that. Um, I think the only difference is they've all got 4G pitches, which tells you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, I'm not. It's, uh, Stanway's a, a good club for anyone that's been over there. It's, uh, it's a supported, well run football club. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a football club. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Well, listen, Terry, I'm a massive, you know, massive fan of yours, as you know, and I'm, you know, fantastic for you to actually come and uh, join me tonight and, and, and have a about your career, and uh, and it is a glowing career as well. But a massive congratulations for what you've achieved so far and what you're about to achieve as well. Um, but um, I suppose uh, we better let you go and say thank you very much, Terry, for joining us tonight, and uh, we'll see you soon. Pleasure as always. Thank you very much.